Okay, today we got a uh, Ford, it's a 2002 E350, and the customer complaint is that there's no, uh, there's no air conditioning or heat. The, uh, the, the fan doesn't work at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, obviously turn the key to the on position inside the vehicle, and then we're going to come out here, down by the battery, and we're going to check the uh, blower motor down here to, uh, to see if there's uh, power or ground there. And just so you know, there's a resistor down in there. That's that white thing with the, uh, with the wires connecting into it you see down there. That's the resistor. That's actually very common. That burns out all the time. So I have a suspicion that that resistor is going to be no good. So uh, let me get my uh, equipment and we'll get started. Okay, by equipment, what I meant is I get my uh, test light and we're going to check for uh, power and ground down at the uh, at the blower motor itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to obviously have the key in the on position inside the vehicle. We're going to connect our test light, whether it's a power probe or whatever you have, connect it up to the negative and the positive. And then we're going to go down to the uh, to the blower motor and we're going to check the power and ground. Uh, like I said, it happens a lot where the resistor burns out, but it's always a good idea to check it just to make sure. And uh, What I'm going to be checking is right. What we're going to be checking is right down here. And this is the uh, the connector to the blower motor here. And what we're going to do is we're going to check these connectors down here for power and ground. All right, the red light means we have power. Oh, and the green light means we have uh, a negative. So in this particular case, I thought the resistor down there was going to be no good. But as it turns out, it's going to be the blower motor. If you have power and you have ground at the blower motor and it's not running, then the motor itself is no good. So uh, the way we're going to uh, access that is we're going to uh, remove the battery. So well, let me get some tools and we'll get started. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to obviously we're going to get our test equipment out of here because we're pretty much done with that for right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the uh, the negative and the positive on the battery. First one you're going to disconnect is always disconnect your negative cable first. So you take that off. And then we're going to disconnect our positive cable. cables disconnected, just push them off to the side, and then we're going to take the battery out. And there's a, there's a little 8 uh, millimeter screw down here that holds the battery into the battery box. Sometimes they get pretty rusty. Let me uh, see how it goes. Okay, 
and we do have to remove the, uh, the battery tray. And the way you do that is we just take out these screws, I'll show you real quick, down in the battery tray itself. We need to take the blower motor out, and you can see that it's not going to come past right here. I'm going to be replacing this resistor too at the same time because I'm taking everything out anyway. Uh, to take out the battery tray, we just take out this bolt and this bolt, and we should be able to lift this tray out. And then we're going to remove this screw here, 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 and there's probably one or two more down in there. Uh, so let me uh, take the tray out. We're going to disconnect these screws. I'm going to take off this electrical connector here, of course. Just push this back and you pull that right out. So uh, let me get started and we'll see what I'm doing. so we don't have any accidents. All right, and we're just going to uh, unplug that electrical connector. Just take a screwdriver, you pry it open a little bit. And we'll lock it back and forth. Not too much pressure because you don't want to uh, you don't want to break the uh, locking pins off. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna just take out those screws I told you about. On the blower motor, and they're usually at five sixteenths or eight millimeters. And we just take those out, and we're gonna reuse them again, so don't lose them. You know they do fall, so be careful with it. tight squeeze as you can see coming out of there but what I did is I actually turned it so that this flat part was coming out over here by the receiver dryer and then I pulled it right out so uh, let me get the new one and uh, we'll put it back together All right, some of the motors come with the new uh, squirrel cage on it already but in this particular case it doesn't come with the cage so what we're going to do is to get this off the cage we're just going to take off this clip right here we're going to take that off and we don't have to worry about saving it because it comes with a new clip here. So we just have to break this clip off here. And uh, the way I do it is get underneath it with a scribe, hook it underneath the bottom of it, and just pry it up slowly. Most of the time they just come, come off a little bit rusty, but they come off and you just turn it. And you turn each one and you just pry it up a little at a time. And it starts to come up. switch the cage over. Uh, sometimes they're stuck, sometimes they're not. This one here is going to be stuck, so let's uh, tap that out of there. Just a little bit of uh, some penetrating oil or something to make it slide a little bit. Now we're going to just tap that out of there. Sometimes you can just tap it like that and it comes right out. this particular case it's not coming out all the way so you can just once you tap it down a little bit you just keep walking it back and forth and you keep slide up with pressure on it and it comes right off all right so we're going to get rid of this one and we're going to put the new one back onto here
There's only one way it's going to belong, so you don't have to worry about making a mistake because you can see the side of this is flat and this is flat. Goes on all the way like that. Then you take your new clip that came with it and you push the new clip right on over the top like that and it'll keep the squirrel cage from coming off when it does run. All right, so now um, let me get it back inside the truck and uh, we'll put it back together. Okay, now we're back. Now we just have to uh, get that back into the rails. And one more thing I just want to show you too is uh, we need to take this hose off of here and uh, put it onto the, uh, onto the other blower motor because it didn't come with one. And it's got a band around it to hold it in place. And you just pull it right off. And you put it right on to this one here. Make sure it's in all the way, and that's how it goes, flush like this. All right, now we're going to get the motor back in there, and we're going to put our bolts back in it, and we're going to do this. screws back inside here to hold it in before you tighten them all just catch them just lightly one or two threads until you get all the, all the uh, screws caught and then you can tighten everything in be careful in the back because if you go in there with a ratchet you may drop it so catch them by hand first As you can see, this, this blower motor is a little bit different. This one plugged directly into the motor here. The replacement has a longer attachment for it, so we'll plug it together. Snaps in place. We just put that down to the bottom. Let me show you this real quick here. Make sure you reattach the hose down on the bottom right here. Like that. And now we're going to change this resistor down here. Not that the resistor is bad, but it's a fairly cheap resistor, and you have to take the whole thing back apart in order to get to it later. So we're just going to unplug this plug, take out this screw here, and that screw down there, and then we'll take that resistor out. So uh, let me do that, and I'll show you how that goes. Okay, 
the way you take that plug out is just like I showed you the other one. You take the screwdriver and you just put slight pressure behind it, not too much because you don't want to break it, and you pull at the same time that you pry these little tabs out. right out. Now we're going to take out those two screws that we talked about. Take the bottom one out first. It's the easiest to get out. Don't lose it because you're going to need it again. Take out your second screw on the resistor. And the resistor comes right out of the, uh, the vehicle. We grab the new one and we'll put it back together. Screws back in, we do the top one first. Again, don't tighten it tight, just catch it in there by hand so you can still move the resistor around as you need to. screws caught in there, you can tighten the, uh, the bolts. Alright, remember you have to plug your resistor back in, there's only one way it goes, and you'll feel it snap right in. Alright, All right. next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, install the battery box. Anything up. Okay, battery box is back in. Now we're going to lay our battery in. Now, as you can see, the end on this one broke, so I am going to replace the battery end before I put this back together. So um, let me get a new end and uh, I'll come back in a second when we're ready to. Uh, to put the rest of it back together. And basically what we're going to do at the end is we're going to take a pair of cut the pliers, we're going to cut this off right here, and then we'll change the end. So uh, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to grab a razor blade and we'll do that now. If we cut it off with the, uh, with the razor blade to remove the outer shield, we we'll just take a pair of cut the pliers, and we'll cut off the end wires like this. Alright, 
this end that is trash, obviously. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut back the insulation on here just about a, I'm going to say about a quarter of an inch, not too far. You can cut it with anything you have, a razor blade, a knife, whatever you have. Same thing with the other one here, we're just going to cut this back about a half inch. Anyway you can cut it, you cut it. You want to use a knife, you want to use a razor blade, whatever you want. We're going to take our new end, and we're going to put the wiring in through that. And we'll tighten it down. Fairly easy. You can use a ratchet, whatever you, whatever you want. Okay, and that's how you change the uh, the end. So let's get the battery, lay the battery back in there, and uh, we'll get this wrapped up. battery and you got to put it back in negative and positive obviously it's a, a very simple thing but you don't want to make a mistake all right reconnect your positive side first and your negative side last sell all different kinds of cleaners you can use on there, but this works the best. As long as it's clean, you'll be fine. Alright, remember what I said, we're going to connect the positive on first, put the positive cable on, and we can tighten that up. Now remember what I said about uh, connecting the positive first. And I'm going to tell you the reason why you do that. Obviously, anybody who's mechanical or has done this before knows why. But for anybody who hasn't, I just want to tell you. This is positive. This is on the positive right here. If this wrench touches something made of metal, such as this line or anything in here, you're going to have a short if you have the uh, positive and the negative both connected. By leaving the negative disconnected, it doesn't matter what you touch now. There's no connection. Uh, there's no uh, there's no completed circuit. So uh, positive on first, negative on last. And remember, we took that uh, the uh, hold down off, so we do have to uh, reinstall that too. Uh, all right, what we're going to do, reconnect our negative cable on here, and just tighten it down. And negative, it doesn't matter if the wrench touches anything because everything in the vehicle itself 
is negative. I'll show you an example of what I mean. If you're tightening up a negative cable and your wrench slips and hits anything made of metal on here, it doesn't really matter because everything in the car or truck or whatever you're working on is negative. Right? So you tighten that up until it's tight. Nice and tight. The positive is nice and tight. We're going to reinstall the hold down and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll get started to, to, to turn the key on and make sure everything works properly. So let me reconnect this and uh, we'll see how it goes. And now, if we've done everything right, if we turn the key on, the uh, fan should come on. And that's it. I don't know if you can hear it, but that's the sound you wanted to hear. Fan's running, and it works properly. Let's go inside the vehicle and uh, make sure. But um, just make sure your stuff is reconnected on as it belongs. And that's it. Not too bad when you know what you're doing or where everything is located. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.